Well, new questions today about the White House's stance on the Keystone oil pipeline that would have stretched from Canada down to the Gulf Coast. Just a couple of weeks ago, the president's press secretary, who you saw there, Jay Carney, insisted that Republicans were to blame for killing this project. And that's not all. Listen to what he said. The president didn't turn down the Keystone pipeline. There was a process in place uh, long, with long precedent uh, run out of the State Department because of the issue of a pipeline crossing an international boundary. So it wasn't the president. But now there are reports that the president himself is personally lobbying Senate Democrats now to reject a new amendment that calls for the construction of this pipeline, irrespective of what the president says. We expect that vote to happen later today. Joining me now to discuss it, Leslie Marshall. She's a syndicated radio talk show host and a Fox News contributor. And Lars Larson, also a syndicated radio host with Compass Media Networks. So Jay Carney was trying to say that the president only said no to the pipeline when he, when he said no, because he was being forced to give a decision prematurely. He didn't want to issue a decision until more review, and he was forced to make a decision, so he sort of said, if, if I have to do it now, the answer is no. But the implication of the White House all along has been he's been open-minded on this as it gets reviewed. Now, Lars, he seems to be lobbying directly to Senate Democrats saying, don't, don't vote yes on this pipeline today. Is that a contradiction? Yeah, I think it's a contradiction. I think the excuse of Hillary made me do it is not going to fly with the American public. You know, Megan, it's sad, but this president is guilty of petrophobia. He's simply afraid of allowing Americans to have the oil, the diesel, the gasoline that they need to make the country run. This is a sad thing when we see the intolerance of petrophobia practiced from 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. The president needs to get over it, get behind the pipeline, allow those union jobs to go forward, and allow that oil to flow. I mean, if we can allow millions of illegal aliens to cross our southern border, can't we allow a few hundred thousand barrels of oil to cross our northern border? Petrophobia. <laughs> Leslie, you got to love that one. But, but if, the, if the president is so open-minded to this, depending on the environmental review and how things go, then why is he calling Senate Democrats? Because they say that this could be tight. This could be tight. He could lose. Uh, why is he lobbying Senate Democrats to stick, stick with the White House on this and not vote yes on taking the decision out of his hands? Well, because quite frankly, the State Department says it hasn't been able to complete a full review. Even the uh, governor of Nebraska, who's a Republican, where the diversion over the international line into the United States will come, says, wait, wait, wait a minute. This could pollute our water. And in addition to that, environmentalists are saying, and not just environmentalists, but scientists and the State Department are saying, we need to see what chemicals and how much of these chemicals are in the oil. God forbid there be a spill, just like we have with BP. So this isn't, no, 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 we're never going to do it. This is a delay. This is until we have all, this is the same thing he's been saying before. Until the he's saying over. no to this. He's saying no. He's saying no to this until we have <laughs> reviewed everything to make sure we're safe. The people of Nebraska deserve to have safe drinking water. The people of America deserve to know you what know, chemicals are in that Lars, oil. Lars, there, there was a split on this issue between the environmentalists and the unions. The unions want the jobs that this thing would create. Yeah. And the Republicans want the oil. Uh, and the environmentalists are more concerned about the environmental issues. Uh, there was a thought that the president sort of catered to the environmentalists on this and ticked off the unions but because he had to choose one. But now he's, he's doubling down. I mean, he's really saying he means it. He yep. could have just said, environmentalist, I did you a solid. Then Congress took it out of my hands. He seems to really not, not want this thing right now. Megan, this seems easy to read to me. The environmentalists will use the water and the, you know, the, sand, uh, the sand dunes and all that as an excuse. The fact is, they don't want America using oil. And the president has said he wants America off oil. His energy secretary has said it out loud. His transportation secretary has said we will not favor motorized transportation over non-motorized. They want to take us back to, what, the bicycle era? This isn't going to work. And the fact is that the president wants expensive oil because and he said so himself. He wants $5 gasoline so that Americans will get out of their cars. And this year, for the first time, Americans have actually driven fewer miles than they did all the way back to 2003. Let the president is getting what he wants. Leslie, Those environmentalists uh, don't is, he, is, he, is he doing this at a political peril? Because already today, forget once the GOP presidential candidates get a hold of this, already today, take a listen to the Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell. And frankly, it's hard to even comprehend how out of touch, how completely out of touch he is on this issue. I mean, think about it. At the moment when, at a moment when millions are out of work, uh, gas prices are literally skyrocketing, 
and the Middle East is in turmoil. We've got a president who's up making phone calls trying to block a pipeline here at home. It's really almost unbelievable. Your thoughts? Well, I'm not surprised that My. comes from him. I mean, that man made it, made it very clear that it is his and Republicans' agenda to uh, unseat uh, the, the president. So that's not a big surprise. And it's not a big surprise that he feels that way, not only because he's a Republican. There are a lot of people who feel that way. However, this is a president that knows more than we do, more than we do. The aftermath of what happened with BP, he doesn't want to repay. Hind hindsight is 2020, and I think the president is being smart, again, in a preventative manner. This isn't saying no Megan. pipeline. This this is, this is saying what? A, a delay of perhaps what? 90 days? Ensuring that construction of all of these materials are American made? That's not what's on the floor for a vote right now. I think it's a delay of, uh, of longer Megan. than 90 days, but go ahead, Lars. It's much longer than 90 days. And let me cons let, let, let Leslie answer this. The State Department's question is simple. Is it in the national best interest for this oil to cross the border? That's actually the technical question that Hillary Clinton has to answer. Three answer. years later, they let can't answer, figure out go. if it's good. Okay, and by the way, have Sandra Fluke call her buddy in the White House and explain she can't get through law school without having gasoline for her car. That might do the trick. Leslie, last word. Oh, God. L Lars, I, I'm, I'm going to fall down from that one. That's, that's worse than connecting uh, Iraq to, uh, you, to uh, uh, you know, weapons of mass destruction. But anyway, uh, you know, the, bot the bottom line here is if you're a governor of a state and that pipeline's coming through your state and they, and they say, wait, and he's a Republican, Lars, please, I need to ensure that the drinking water of my state is going to be safe when it's the number one killer of people and children throughout the world, dysentery, by the way. And, and, se and secondly, when, when you're diverting the route and we don't even have the actual okay. route that it's been diverted too. Okay, guys, got to go. Thank you both so much. Coming up.